Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome to the final lecture of this week. Today's lecture is a little different, little different from the others. So, we, so far we have studied about multiple personality disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder and uh, uh, play therapy and again uh, conditional uh, re emotional responses uh, that is how Watson uh, showed that uh, human beings could also be conditioned, could learn anything. So, even uh, fear could be learned. And in today's session, today, today's lecture, we are actually discussing about uh, therapy or treatment processes and how diagnosis is done. So, primarily uh, this was a very interesting article that uh, was published in science in 1973 by D. L. Rosenhan and he showed that actually uh, psychiatric diagnosis does not mean anything. So, that psychiatric diagnosis and most of the times are uh, made uh, just on uh, the present information that is available and most of the times they are not correct. So, um, this um, based on this, so there was already a movement uh, called uh, which was trying to classify the mental disorders and uh, there was the ICD-10 or the International Classification of Diseases and on the other side there was also uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders that was trying to uh, put the uh, different diagnosis into place by the classification systems. And um, in spite of all this, uh, there was also another movement that was coming up and that was the anti-psychiatry movement. It was uh, primarily led by uh, famous psychologist uh, namely Thomas Sass. And uh, this movement, Rosenhan also belong, belonged to this movement and he felt that uh, this uh, the medical practitioners who are trying to diagnose uh, psychiatric diseases are not doing justice to the individuals. And um, they are actually in the, in the process of diagnosis and treatment, they are actually labeling the patients. So, just to uh, show that uh, this was what was happening, uh, Rosenhan tried, uh, studied uh, the, uh, this idea and put it into an experimental form. So, the primary hypothesis of the study was, he, uh, it was actually an experimental test that Rosenhan wished to carry out and the hypothesis was that the psychiatrist cannot reliably tell the difference between people who are sane and those who are insane. Now, imagine if I say this to a psychiatrist today, then it definitely uh, how many of them would agree. Now, because there are a lot of classification systems and you can actually if you follow the classification systems in order as I talked about the DSM and when you go through the slides you will see there is ICD and DSM and they have this uh, very clear as to what are the some symptoms that are required to diagnose somebody with say having OCD or say uh, uh, dissociative identity disorder or NPD or specific phobia. Then how could this be true that uh, psychiatrists could not reliably tell the difference between people who are sane and who are insane. But Rosenham claimed that this was true. And he also said that if this hypothesis were supported, it would follow that the classification system used to make such a diagnosis is actually invalid. So, unless, so his focus was that unless we can reliably differentiate the sane from the insane, we cannot be sure that a particular diagnosis, diagnostic label such as schizophrenia actually describes a patient's mental disorder. So, when we are talking of mental disorder and we are actually labeling a patient with schizophrenia, how can we do that without? So, it is injustice to the patient unless we are really sure 
whether this person is sane or insane. So now these are the two hypotheses uh, that he wished to check, primarily it was only one hypothesis and here he tried to do it in two ways. So, the there were two experiments, the experiment one uh, which was a major experiment involved pseudo patients. So, people who were actually acting like patients, but they were not real patients and they were their work was to participate uh, uh, means they were individual participants and their work was to complain of hearing voices that is in uh, psychological and psychiatric terms uh, just show that they were having auditory hallucinations and trying to gain admission to various American hospitals. So, in this case the independent variable would be complaints of hearing voices and the dependent variable that is the variable that is dependent on the independent variable is whether or not the psychiatrist admitted the pseudo patients to the hospital and if so what diagnostic label did they use. So, if an individual turned up at a hospital at a, a mental hospital in this case where psychiatric illness was being treated and complained of hearing voices what would the psychiatrist do. So, are they so the idea was to see that if sane people actually act it out can the doctors make the difference. And the secondary experiment following this first one was I, by informing uh, involved w the informing the um, hospital people that uh, there would be pseudo patients who would be trying to gain admission and in whom staff. So, they would the second experiment would be based on the first experiment. So, after the ex first experiment would be done that information would be given to the hospital staff that see there were people trying to gain admission they were pseudo patients and now also some other pseudo patients are trying to take admission in your hospital and uh, then they would see how many providing a false information how many patients would be considered as pseudo patients. So, incidentally there were no pseudo patients in the second experiment there were no pseudo patients. So, there was no patient individual who was uh, participating in the study and pretending to be a patient trying to gain admission to a hospital. This is for the second experiment for the first experiment that is what uh, the participants were trying to do. So, let us see how he carried this out the study was a naturalistic field experiment and both the experiments took place in actual psychiatric hospitals. So, the first experiment also involved a large measure of participant observation. So, basically the participants who were pretending to be patients and once they were admitted these patients or pseudo patients kept written records of how the ward as a whole operated as well as how they were treated personally by the staff and the doctors and the nurses. So, uh, there were 8 pseudo patients this is in experiment 1 there were 8 pseudo patients. Uh, comprised of psychology graduate student in his 20s, three psychologists and one of whom was Rosenham. So, Rosenham himself participated in the study. There was a pediatrician, a psychiatrist, a painter and a housewife. So, all in all there were three women and five men and all used pseudonyms. So, they did not um, originally tell their name and those in the mental health profession. So, there would be psychology students three psychologists and the psychiatrist. So, all of them actually uh, claim to have other occupations, but you know apart from this everything that they said was true. So, and besides other than Rosenhan whose presence was known to the hospital administrator and chief psychologist, the presence of the pseudo patients and the nature of the research was unknown to the hospital staff. So, only the Ad chief administrator and the chief psychologist knew that Rosenhan was a psychologist and he was a pseudo patient about the rest of the people nobody was aware. So, there were 7 pseudo patients other than Rosenhan in the hospitals in 12 hospitals in US and where they gained admission several times uh, from one hospital to the other and they were really unaware of them. 
that these were pseudo patients. So, in order to be able to generalize the results so such that this is not only one hospital and one particular doctor who is actually making the mistake of uh, I diagnosing a, a normal individual as a patient, they tried this out with 12 hospitals. So, they moved around USA into different hospitals and uh, they got themselves reported with the symptoms of auditory hallucinations or hearing voices and then they got themselves admitted. And um, um, so, these hospitals were uh, di different from each other. So, some were old and shabby, some quite new, some were research oriented, some were not. Some had very good staff. Uh, patient staff patient ratios, others were quite understaffed. So, they actually covered these variables. So, whether uh, these variables would also make an impact on the diagnosis. So, they, they tried it out, to, they tried to generalize the results and that is why they traveled to different hospitals. So, then what happened? So, after calling, how did they get admission? So, after calling the hospital for an appointment, the pseudo patient or in this case the participant of the study arrived at the admissions office complaining of hearing voices. The voices were unclear, seemed to be saying empty hollow thud. The voices were unfamiliar and of the same sex as the pseudo patient. So, every the, so for all the 8 people including Rosenhan, these are the symptoms they complained of. There was nothing else other than this. Apart from the voices and falsifying their name and employment, everything else they said about themselves was true. Including their life history, relationships with parents and siblings, spouse and children, work colleagues, people at school as well as the other things that upset or frustrated them and brought them joy and satisfaction. So, every other thing that they mentioned about themselves was absolutely normal. So, they was um, or true the, and their behavior after they entered the hospital was also normal. So, other than mentioning even when they were talking to the doctor, uh, when this, to the psychiatrist during admission and also to the other clinicians in the hospital, other than mentioning about this uh, hearing voices, about the voices and uh, the voice, the characteristics of the voices that they heard, other than that none of them, none of the patients, pseudo patients showed any other psychopathology. So, that is any other psychological symptom that would m help to diagnose that they were patients. So, what would happen? So, there was just one symptom and other than hiding about their identity, especially if they were in the occupation of mental health and their name, other than that, everything they said about themselves was true. So, would they be actually identified as frauds or patients? Let us see what happens. They were admitted to the psychiatric ward and after that the, what the, the work was that the patients, the pseudo patients would stop simulating any symptoms of abnormality. So, they behaved as normal as they could. So, apart from a brief period of nervousness, many had actually felt that they would be identified as frauds and uh, they would be exposed. So, uh, there was this initial anxiety that, that was natural even in the participants, but after they got admitted, they behaved normally and they spoke to the other patients normally and the staff also as if there was nothing wrong with them. When asked by the staff how they were feeling, they indicated that they were fine and no longer experienced symptoms. So, the symptoms had also vanished. So, initially just for the admission, they spoke about the symptoms. So, the symptoms being that they heard, heard voices, but other than that, once they were admitted, they stopped talking about the symptoms. They did what was asked of them, including taking their medication, which they of course did not swallow. And in addition to the activities available on the ward, they spend their time writing down their observations about the ward and the patients. So, so the normal are not detectively seen. So, this is the result. 
So what, what does Rosenhan have to say? So despite their public show of sanity, so they had displayed sanity in every domain after they got admitted. In fact, even during admission, other than speaking about hearing boi voices, none of their behaviors showed any difference. But in spite of that, the pseudo patients were never found out by the staff. So their true nature uh, that they were pretending to be patients was not found out by the staff. In 11 out of the 12 cases, they were admitted with a diagnosis of schizophrenia and discharged with a diagnosis of schizophrenia in remission. So although there were considerable variations between the hospitals, several were considered excellent. Length of hospitalization range from 7 to 52 days with an average of 19 days. So it was quite common for the real patients to detect the pseudo patient sanity. So now this is very interesting. So the though the hospital staff saw them as patients, treated them and uh, were they were also given medication, asked several questions where they apparently where they behaved normally still. They were given all the due treatment that was uh, to be given to a schizophrenic. The real patients identified the pseudo patients. So, 35 out of 118 patients on admission ward voiced their suspicions. You are not crazy, you are a journalist or a professor referring to the continuous note taking and you are checking up on the hospital. So, these are things that the real patients told the pseudo patients, but the hospital staff could not actually identify that these were not real patients. So that brings us to the question, so were the patients better at detecting normality than psychiatrists? Are the clinicians, so this is one of the questions that has really perturbed psych the psychiatry and especially the anti-psychiatry movement. that. Are the psychiatrists so busy, are the clinicians, the psychiatrists, the psychologists and the mental health professionals so um, engaged in diagnosing people that they really rule out normality. So they are not good at detecting normality and in fact this study seems to show, seems to show that the patients truly were better detectors of normality than the mental health professionals. So Rosenhan suggested that doctors, what happens to the doctors is they have, they are strongly biased towards the type 2 errors. Now what is a type 2 error? That is, it, they would, if it is a healthy person, they would rather call that person sick instead of missing out. So that is, than call, calling a sick person healthy. So that would be a false negative or that would be a type 1 error. Now the problem with the doctors is it is better to be safe than sure. So um, Rosenhan pointed out that a healthy person, it would be better to diagnose a healthy person as uh, sick and go through the um, checking procedure, assessment procedure, evaluation procedure rather than diagnosing a sick person as healthy. So uh, this misdiagnosis is really good for the other um, illnesses primarily because it, it makes the doctor more cautious. But with uh, mental health there is a problem because there is also the um, condition of labeling that individual with a mental illness. So let us see what the second experiment was all about. So after the first experiment was done, the staff in the research and teaching hospital were informed about the results of experiment 1 and uh, they doubted that such errors could be made in their hospital. Uh, so this information was consciously given to each of the hospitals that they were going to visit, uh, that they had visited and they were informed that at some time during the next 3 months, one or more pseudo patients would try to gain admission. So each member of the staff was asked to rate each patient on a 10 point scale who presented him or herself at admissions or on the ward as to the likelihood that he or she was a pseudo patient. So now you see what has happened, the 
uh, hospital uh, staff, so the mental health professionals, they had all been primed. They had been informed that the, a pseudo patient, that, so such, as, uh, such an experiment has happened. And there were pseudo patients who were put in the hospitals and they were diagnosed as patients. So now everybody is very cautious. In the second experiment, consciously the hospitals were told that now there will be pseudo patients planted in your hospital and very soon, um, you know, uh, within the next three months. So you, it is advisable that you actually um, rate each patient who takes admission on a 1 to 10, one, 10 point scale to see, uh, to say whether you, I, whether you think that this could be a pseudo patient. And the findings were all the staff that is attendants, nurses, psychiatrists, doctors and psychologists were asked to make these judgments on a 10 point scale about 193 patients admitted for treatment with whom they had had sustained contact or for whom they had had major responsibility. Now what were the results? 41 patients were confidently judged to be pseudo patients by at least one staff member. So they were pretty sure that 41 people out of the 193 were pseudo patients. 23 were suspected by at least one psychiatrist. So there was there's some uh, problem, but at least 23 were confirmed. Now this was done by psychiatrists, mind you, and 19 were suspected by one psychiatrist plus one staff member. So now we have 19 people who were at where two people were at least sure. So along with the psychiatrist, another staff member was absolutely sure that 19 of them were completely pseudo patients. Now the case was that none of the patients were pseudo patients over there. So all were genuine, genuinely suffering from men, some mental illness or the other. So that just shows that uh, the results of both the experiments showed that psychiatrists cannot distinguish the sane from the insane. Now if I say this loudly today, I, uh, there will be a lot of criticism and in fact there were a lot of criticisms at that point in time too and there was, there was a lot of argument and contradictions as to the design of the study and how uh, the diagnosis was done and we will just get to that but just completing Rosenhan's conclusions he said that the psychiatrist cannot distinguish the sane from the insane. Psychiatrists, psychiatric hospitals impose a special environment in which the meaning of behavior can easily be distorted. Patients suffer powerlessness, depersonalization, segregation and self-labeling which are all counter therapeutic. A type 2 error in psychiatric does, uh, diagnosis as I mentioned does not have the same consequence as in a medical diagnosis. The problem is that if it is misdiagnosed with a mental health disorder, mental disorder, then the individual is labeled for a lifetime. So all these conclusions as you see, I have mentioned earlier also that these go by the anti-psychiatric movement. Now let us see what the other psychiatrists had to say. Now definitely this showed Rosenan's study in 1973 which was published in science showed that yes, there was, there was something definitely that was going wrong. Now let us see what the other uh, point of view was. So uh, they, uh, so their Spitzer in 1976 noted that the discharge diagnosis of schizophrenia in remission that was given to the uh, subjects in to the pseudo patients in experiment 1 is hardly ever given to real patients when they are given an admission. So, the psychiatrist there actually successfully recognized that the individuals who showed the symptom of a disorder that really disappears completely had in fact experienced remission. So, they at this, so when they were talking of remission, it means that at this point in time they were not having any symptoms. So, that is why because there was uh, these patients had reported of a symptom, that is why the diagnosis that was made was schizophrenia on remission, in remission. So, because otherwise if an individual, so even when the, so what Spitzer tried to say is that even when the sub individual um, is admitting himself with auditory hallucinations during admission, 
he would by no account be discharged with a summary of schizophrenia in remi remission. So, it would be given only when the individual the, the psychiatrist had diagnosed that probably at some point in time as the patient reports that he has had auditory hallucinations. So, as the patient re reports about it, so he, he could have had some psychotic features, but currently he is on remission. So, he has no psychopathology, no problems, no mental health problems currently. So, the Rosenhan study suggests that mental health professionals can actually distinguish psychotic from non-psychotic people with surprisingly high levels of accuracy. And he was Rosenhan was criticized for his own use of words. So, the other psychiatrists psychiatrist pointed out that generally sanity and insanity is not a diagnosis that a psychiatrist would make. So, Rosenhan was condemned for Rosenhan condemned others for labeling, but he was using the terms sane and uh, insane, which were legal terms and not psychiatric concepts. So, other than this, um, there was um, also another a very important thing that uh, came out that why uh, if we if we consider if we consider the anti psychiatric movement that uh, the uh, this labeling is wrong and that uh, the patients should not be the what is happening is whatever the person is uh, saying the psychiatrist is labeling as per that the diagnosis is made as per what the psychiatrist is saying and this is actually affecting the individual's lifestyle and also you know the after uh, there are large uh, huge impacts of the uh, labeling then uh, another criticism was that why would the uh, then why would people exhibit such symptoms or deviant behavior in the first place now this uh, people who think that um, the, these mentally ill people are the psychiatrists who think that the mentally ill people are labeled and therefore they are tre and treated likewise they cannot account for why someone shows the deviant behavior in the first place and this was pointed out by MacLeod in 1998 and also another very important thing is that if diagnostic labels are really so powerful why were the genuine patients in Rosenhan's study not deceived, deceived by them? So, if the actually the pseudo patients behavior seem to have been more powerful than whatever adverse effects the labels may have exerted on these observers participations, then the abnormal people or uh, I should say the play patients who were there should have uh, also uh, been fooled. Now, why were they not fooled? by their behavior. So, now this is uh, you know Rosenhan's study is uh, has been criticized from both ends. So, has been supported by the anti psychiatric movement, but criticized from the other uh, psychiatric point of view, but it raises a concern for psychiatry and clinical psychology and mental health in general. So, I thought that you know this would give us an interesting perspective of um, how sane are we or you know actually whether insanity is true, but of course, uh, as, uh, as uh, scientific people we should not be using the term mind you abnormal, sane, sanity and insanity that would probably be for legal terms. Thank you.